You're watching the news on Bahrain Television. A very good evening. The deputy of His Majesty the King, His Royal the Crown Prince, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, highlighted that the common values and consolidating security and stability are the main characteristics of the strategic and friendly relations between Bahrain and Britain. His Royal the Crown Prince added that 200 years of historic Bahraini-British relations is a model that demonstrates the determination of the leadership and people of the two countries for the purpose of development of love and peace. His Royal the Crown Prince made reference to the care and concern of His Majesty the King, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, for supporting the outstanding relations with the United Kingdom and further developing communication across the various sectors. His Royal said that such historic relations have helped with preserving mutual understanding and respect, which led to the coordination and cooperation that supported the mutual interests of the two countries. While attending a reception ceremony on board the British destroyer Defender at Mina Salman and within the framework of celebrating 200 years of Bahrain-British relations under the care of His Majesty the King, His Rohanas the Deputy Prince affirmed the celebrating the Bahraini-British relations on board of the British military ship is a special icon due to the position of the naval military cooperation enjoyed between the two countries within the solid relations. Such relations, he added, will witness a new important step as a result of the expected opening of the British naval facilities during this year. Upon arrival of His Royal Highness, he was received by the commander of the Defender and a number of naval officers. He briefed His Royal Highness on the latest facilities and equipment the ship has been provided with, which enhances its maneuvering capabilities. During this ceremony, the British ambassador to the kingdom, Mr. Simon Martin, in a speech, made reference to the long-established relations between the two countries and expressed his thanks and appreciation to the royal care for such a ceremony which signifies and celebrates the long-standing relations. He voiced thanks to the leadership of the Kingdom of Bahrain for its keenness and care for supporting the continued relations between Bahrain and Britain.
His Royal Highness uh, Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Glebia Palace the Speaker of the Representative Council Ahmed Al Mullah, Representative and Shura Council members, and senior state officials. His Royal Highness discussed the local, regional, and international issues and stressed the need for stronger cooperation between the GCC and Arab countries to face current challenges and not to be victims to those who seek to cause unrest and instability. He also affirmed the importance of unified stances and actions between the GCC and Arab countries to maintain gains, security, and Stability. He stressed that a stronger unity will help in facing whomever aims to threaten the development and progress achieved. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister expressed rejection to all interferences in the internal affairs of the countries and stressed that all countries have the rights to preserve its sovereignty and to take all necessary measures to protect its security and the safety of its people. His Royal Highness lauded the cooperation between the executive and legislative authorities, stressing the need to strengthen this cooperation to maintain security and stability. He lauded the stances of both the representatives and Shura councils regarding various internal and external issues. He also affirmed the government's keenness to enhance cooperation with the legislative of authority to achieve progress for the country and the aspiration of its people. His Royal Highness uh, Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired today the cabinet meeting at Libya Palace. The cabinet announced cutting diplomatic ties with Iran and directed the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to take the necessary measures in this regard. The cabinet strongly condemned the recent terrorist attacks on Saudi Arabia's embassy in Tehran and its consulate in Mashhad in Iran. It stressed such acts of violence are a blatant breach of international diplomatic conventions and norms. The meeting also condemned recent Iranian statements which are a clear interference in Saudi Arabia's internal 
affairs and also seek to undermine Saudi Arabia's sovereignty. The cabinet then extended its deepest condolences to the families of the three Bahraini soldiers who lost their lives as a result of an accident while on duty as part of the Saudi-led Arab coalition. The servicemen are Captain Ahmed Amin, Captain Barak al ramehi and First Sergeant Hassan Iskander. His role and the Prime Minister emphasized the importance of ensuring the availability of the necessary medication for all patients and directed the Ministry of Health to coordinate with the relevant authorities in order to ensure the availability of medicine and treatment that cover all types of illnesses. A number of memoranda submitted by ministries and ministerial committees were also discussed during this week's cabinet meeting. The cabinet approved a memorandum regarding amending electricity and water tariffs to redirect subsidies towards citizens as previously agreed by the executive and legislative authorities and will ensure that Bahrain maintains its leading position within the region for competitive electricity and water prices. The meeting approved a memorandum regarding the organizational restructuring of the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, which includes removing the Directorate of Advanced Information Technology and Re signing some staff members. The cabinet reviewed a memorandum regarding the status of the 14 universities in the kingdom and also reviewed steps taken by the Council of Higher Education to further improve higher education in Bahrain. It also reviewed a memorandum regarding the labor market indicators for the third quarter of 2015, which found that total employment was over 717,000. The cabinet reviewed a draft law regarding the issuance of the financial regulations list of the National Authority for the Regulation of Medical Professions and Health Services. The cabinet also took note of a number of of memoranda by the Shura and Representative Councils regarding a number of draft and decree laws. After the meeting, the Minister of Information and Parliament Affairs, Isa al Hamadi, held a press conference in which he outlined the issues discussed by the Cabinet. The Minister said that the Cabinet assigned the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to cut diplomatic relations with Iran after the repetitive interference in Bahrain's affairs and its support to numerous terrorist organizations in the region and in the Kingdom. And in regards to the issue of electricity and water prices, the Minister said the decision will take effect starting March of this year. The Minister of Energy, Dr. Abdul Hussein Mirza, also spoke at the press conference in which he explained the decision of the Cabinet to amend electricity and water tariffs. He said the amendment aims to apply regulations that contribute to reinforcing income, developing government revenues, increasing productivity and reviewing direct and indirect subsidies of goods and services provided by the government. He highlighted that the amendment will exclude Bahraini consumers with one electricity and water account for a household. Such households will continue to receive the current rate. He said that the amendment aims to redirect subsidies towards citizens as previously agreed by the executive and legislative authorities and will ensure that Bahrain maintains its leading position within the region for competitive electricity and water prices. Bahrain has cut its diplomatic relations with Iran and shut down its diplomatic mission in Tehran and Iranian diplomats in Bahrain have been given 48 hours to leave the kingdom. The foreign ministry issued a statement regarding the continued worsening of the blatant and dangerous interference of the Republic of Iran, not only in the affairs of the Kingdom of Bahrain, but also in the affairs of the GCC as well as the Arab countries. The statement added that Iran interferes in the internal affairs without the slightest regard for values, law or morality, or regard to the principle of good neighborliness or commitment to the principles of the United Nations and the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, which confirms a determination to spread devastation and destruction and provoke unrest and in the region by providing protection and support for terrorists and extremists and the smuggling of weapons and explosives for use by its affiliated terrorist cells, resulting in the loss of lives and the killing of innocent people. The ministry further highlighted the criminal cowardly attacks on the embassy of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in Tehran and its consulate in the city of Mashhad, which constitute a flagrant violation of both international conventions and treaties and embodies the very dangerous sectarian policies that cannot be ignored or accepted and in fact require an immediate response with full force and a confrontation with great resolve in order to prevent a wide chaos and to preserve the security and stability of the entire region and not expose its people to any risks. The statement said the kingdom will take the relevant actions for the implementation of the decision to cut ties with the Islamic Republic of Iran and based on the cabinet's decision, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs summoned Murtaba Sanobari, the acting charge d'affaires of the embassy of the Islamic Republic of Iran and handed him an official memorandum in this regard. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Ahmed al-Mullah, confirmed the importance of the Cabinet's decision to cut diplomatic ties with Iran, saying that such strategic decision supports the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and all GCC countries. He said the step is in favor of reinforcing security against terrorism, stressing the wisdom of His Majesty the King in dealing with such interference, as well as the role of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to guarantee security and stability of the Kingdom, the GCC countries and the Arab region. 
The Shura Council followed up the attacks on the Saudi embassy in Tehran and its consulate in Meshhad in Iran, which is a violation of international treaties and conventions. The council issued a statement in which it condemned the attack and confirmed its support to all measures undertaken by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The Shura Council also supported Bahrain's stance on cutting diplomatic ties with Iran and shutting down its diplomatic mission, which reflects the unity of stance between Bahrain and Saudi and their people against any offensive acts. In preparation for the 2016 Bahrain International Air Show, a security and safety meeting was held today at Sakhir Air Base involving all the concerned parties. Daniel Deporto brings us more in this report. Ahead of the biannual 2016 Bahrain International Air Show to be held in the Kingdom from the 21st to 23rd of January at Sakhir Air Base, a meeting was held today amongst representatives of the BDF, Air Force, National Guard, Ministry of Transport, Ministry of Interior and National Committee for Disaster Management in order to discuss safety, security and contingency plans. The role of the National Committee of Disaster Management is to help uh, uh, the air show organiser in case of any emergency based on the, uh, in, in case of any disaster, God forbidden, uh, the emergency, uh, National Emergency Control Center will be activated based on the instruction of the Minister of Interior. Uh, this uh, actually National uh, Crisis Management Center is comprising of uh, different uh, ministries uh, to give help and assistance to manage and minimize uh, the uh, the effect of any crash or any disaster because of the air show. Today's table meeting addressed the progress of work at the event site and looked into a detailed explanation of traffic management and security plans to guarantee the safety of the air show's participants and spectators. This roundtable discussion will be backed up by a live emergency training drill later in the week. So we are on target. We, we uh, prepared before three months. We have today a stable scenario. And uh, on the 6th, we have a uh, full exercise. All concerned parties will continue to work together to ensure the smooth running, success and security of the air show later this month in the face of any possible setbacks. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporta.